Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a pride event with my wife? I, 30 male, am married to a bisexual woman, 28 female. I'll start by saying that I'm in no way homophobic or bigoted. I've never had a problem with my wife's identity. The thing is, she's very vocal and showy about it. She has a lot of pride things and clothes and whatnot. Sometimes she just wears rainbow stuff instead of bisexual colors too, so there's been incidents where people think she's gay and don't realize I'm her husband. It honestly gets a little exhausting. She says she doesn't like it when people assume that she's straight just because she married a man and doesn't want a big part of her identity erased. She says she doesn't like it when people assume she's straight because she married a man and doesn't want a big part of her identity that she struggled with to be erased. Still, it feels like she's almost ashamed of me. There's a big end of summer pride thing and it's also to raise money for LGBT kids and whatnot. I have no problem with her going, but she wants me to come with. She says it's important to her and she even got me an ally t-shirt. I told her no because it's not my thing and she got upset. She feels like I don't support her identity and I replied that maybe she needs to focus less on her identity and more on her current relationship. She's been icy with me ever since and I get I was mean but still. Am I the asshole for refusing to take money from my son's college fund? I have two sons from a previous marriage, Sam and Trent. When Sam went to college, I had saved up a good amount of money for both of them, but when you divide it by half, it's not enough to graduate debt-free. Trent asked Sam to take his share of the fund and to use it so he could graduate debt-free. Sam promised to return the money to Trent, and if not, he would help him with a loan. Sam and I saved up, and we had enough to pay fully for Trent. Trent ended up getting a scholarship, so we put it in a savings account for Trent in the future. I recently got engaged to Elizabeth, who has a 16-year-old son, Will. She thinks I should use that money for his college. Will doesn't have any savings, and his father is not in the picture. As a single mom, Elizabeth was not able to save much. I don't have much money in my savings account right now because I'm contributing more to my retirement. I refused. In my opinion, that's Trent's money, and he can do with it what he pleases. Elizabeth is mad that I would let one of my kids go into severe debt when it could be avoided. She accused me of being unfair and said that I'm treating my stepson differently. I understand that I need to help Will. On one hand, Trent isn't using it and Will could use that money. But on the other hand, that is Trent's money and it doesn't feel right. Am I the asshole for encouraging my ex-husband to take a DNA test and potentially destroying his family? Me and my ex-husband James tried for seven years to have a baby and James didn't like to go to the doctor to solve fertility things. He even encouraged me not to have annual checkups at the gynecologist. He blamed me for being infertile and that I was unable to have our children. He broke up after he accused me of being a sterile bitch. The plot twist is that after meeting my current husband and we started trying, I decided to go to the hospital and check out my fertility problem. To my shock, everything is healthy and I could have had a child for years probably. The doctor pointed out the possibility of James's infertility. Now I have three children, four male, four male, and two female. James and I still have mutual friendship and have already met after the divorce. I hadn't seen him though in three years until recently. I met up with James and we started talking and he said he was engaged and had a seven-month-old son. I said that I have three children and he said, I'm happy for you. You managed to solve your infertility and got your family. I giggled and said, honey, infertility wasn't on my side. I was able to have kids with you too. Well, yesterday, the now ex-fiance called me raging because he got a DNA test and the baby isn't his. Am I the asshole for not waking up my husband for work? Currently, our marriage is in the toilet and due to financial reasons, we can't give ourselves a separation. We've been living like roommates for the past few months and have laid down rules to give us some time and space to think. We've been together over a decade and I've always been someone who wakes up an hour or more sooner than needed. He is the type of person who will leave to the airport 20 minutes before his flight leaves. Over the years, I've been the one to wake him up since he usually sleeps through his alarms. Due to our current issues and us being more roommates than spouses, I've stopped. I do give him a heads up when we carpool. On my days off, I've been trying to make sure I keep my alarms off and let him wake himself up. Over the past few months, this has resulted in him calling out of work a lot or showing up an hour or two late. 
I had yesterday off but forgot to turn off my alarm so I woke up. I went back to bed 20 minutes later and nudged my husband to tell him he needed to wake up. He told me to bugger off. He ended up arriving to work three hours late and came home with a final write-up. He blamed me for not waking him up and also for all the write-ups, so I flipped out on him. It came down to if you don't want to be my husband, then I'm not going to treat you like one. Am I the asshole for calling the cops because no one picked up the kid I was babysitting? My boyfriend and I took his ex's kid for a last minute overnight stay since the father of the kid canceled on her. The ex and him must be on good terms because at first I thought he was the father. Anyway, she had plans with her friends for the night and we weren't busy so we took him. We then told her we had brunch reservations the next morning at 11 and while we were happy to help she needed to pick him up by 9am. She knew this and agreed when she dropped him off. Yeah, it's really refreshing that they're all so amicable. Well, the next morning, it's 9 a.m. and she isn't here yet. We text and call with no answer. 10 a.m. rolls around and we call again. She picks up in a groggy voice and tells us she has the worst hangover and won't pick him up until 2 p.m. We remind her about our reservation and she tells us to take him with us. He's two and it's not enjoyable to take a child this age to eat. My boyfriend then cancels our reservation. I'm furious. This is not my child or my boyfriend's child. I call and say if she doesn't come by noon, I'd be calling the police to collect her child. She called me the B word and I told her now she has 30 minutes. She never came so I called the cops and they took him to the station. She showed up at 3 p.m. and was pissed off when she found out. Am I the asshole for not answering my ex-girlfriend's calls while on vacation? I know this screams not the asshole but I think I may have acted wrong. I, 20 male, have been on vacation for a little over a month traveling Europe. I saved up money for a long time to do this and it's a big dream of mine. I found out my ex-girlfriend, who I'm not on great terms with, was going to Paris at the same time. We texted a few months ago acknowledging it and this was basically the first time we talked since our breakup. We agreed to maybe make plans once we got there but nothing concrete. However, once I arrived, I really just didn't want to see her. It just kept reminding me of bad memories from our relationship. Once I arrived, I really didn't want to see her and it kept reminding me about bad memories from our relationship so I decided not to. I was seeing some friends in a part of the city and I didn't have Wi-Fi so I didn't check my phone for a few days. When I got service again, I had several messages from my ex saying things like, Are you in Paris? Do you want to get drinks? And even several missed calls along social medias. I ignored it and didn't want to deal with her getting angry or making me feel guilty. However, surprise, we have the same flight home. She's upset saying she could have been in trouble and she thought my phone had been stolen. Am I the asshole for not texting my husband when dinner is ready? I, 36 female, work from home. My husband, 38 male, works in construction. We both do eight hour days, but he is off work about two and a half hours before me. He picks up the kids from school and then goes to the gym and or the bar down the street. This is a more recent routine for him and all he asks is that I text him when dinner is ready. This annoys me right off the bat because it is a lot every day to get off of work, open the door to your office, and immediately be thrown into watching kids and figuring out dinner. So to think about him sipping beer and then just popping up to enjoy hot meals doesn't sit right. He asked again today and got annoyed when I said no. He thinks I'm being an asshole because it takes no energy for me to just text him. Plus, when he is here, he doesn't really help me cook, so what's the difference? I feel like you already avoided all the work associated with the meal. Asking for a special alert for dinner on top of that is outrageous. Plus, when he is here, while he might not help, he sits at the kitchen island and we chat. So maybe I am the asshole because I would rather he be here and am being bitter about the text thing. Is this a normal request? I know it's petty. Am I the asshole for recording my husband? I, 32 female, have been married to my 36 male husband for about a month. I moved to his country after the wedding and that's where we live now. The problem is that my husband never takes my word for it or believes me about anything unless he has solid proof. For example, I'm an English teacher and English is my first language and his second. He was writing a report the other day and asked me if the word nil was spelt like N-I-L-L or with one L. I spelt it correctly for him and he decided that he still needed to Google it and make sure it was correct. 
The other day, he went out to work and came home early exhausted. He took a nap where he snored loudly before stealing the blanket. I was working next to him as he slept and had to get another blanket as it was cold. I thought it was funny and I told him when he woke up. He didn't believe either thing and asked me for proof. I told him I would record him so he'd finally believe me when I spoke. Every night he falls asleep before me so I've been recording him snoring. This morning we got onto the topic of snoring and I told him he was snoring last night but again he didn't believe me. So I told him I had proof this time. He proceeded to get pissed off at me because I violated his privacy. He also claimed how hurtful it was and how wrong I am and how I need to see things from his perspective.